Zero. Yes, good. It's not going to be eight zero. What is it going to be? I heard you talking, Brody. Good. Label it as a point. It's negative two, positive eight. Nice job. So we kind of picked up our video in the middle. We're talking about relative max and relative min. And the recording stopped for some silly reason. I better not do that all day. Or all day. And so the relative max is what we can see of the graph. This would be our highest point. It's not at 0, 8 because it's not on the y-axis. Brody got that. I heard some conversations there. But it would be the highest point, and we graph it like a point, negative 2, positive 8. We did relative minimum before the video was a, was a pain in the bum. And then we did minimum because that was the lowest of point on that graph. Is everybody okay so far? Okay, if you'd like some post-its, we're going to go ahead and do the tough part now. The tough part will be increasing and decreasing. And so we're going to look at these graphs, and there's a couple rules. So I'm going to go out just a little bit. And these are the three rules or the three helps that I'll help you with there. So we'll have to fill this in. We'll talk about increasing graphs and decreasing graphs or where it's increasing and decreasing, okay? They're right in the front of the room. You can grab some. They're up here. I have all kinds of different beautiful colors, and I probably have about 300 more in my closet. So if you want to take some, maybe take a half of them. Yep, I see people with beautiful post-its all over the place. That's awesome. Nice job, Em. Good. Maybe only 300. I don't know. I'll show you. I got all of these. I got like tons and tons of packets of these. I have another whole thing. I got all of these. I don't know, probably 300. I'll put some more in there since you guys are all seeming like you want some um, sticky notes. These are from Achieva Credit Union. They do a teacher thing where they give teachers some free stuff. So that's why I got a different color. Yeah, they have Okay, we're going to talk about increasing and decreasing. There's three rules. When you go ahead and label these, increasing and decreasing, you're always going to move from the left to the right. You want to start at the left, just like you read a book, okay? So let's go ahead and read this graph like we're reading a book. If I go ahead and I jump on f of x, it's a roller coaster. Here's Ms. Shackton. There's my little pink head. I'm going to go ahead and jump on this roller coaster, and everybody in here could tell me what's happening when I get on the roller coaster when I'm on this piece of it. I'm going down. What do we call going down? Downward. Downwards or <laughs> decreasing, declining. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the decreasing for this. So we got on on the left, and everybody knows because we got on the left, the first part of this graph, this first part of the parabola is decreasing. Where is it decreasing from? I have to look at the x-axis. So my eyes go up, and where did I stop when I stopped decreasing? Where am I on the x-axis? Zero. Zero. Perfect. And where did I come from if the graph is on the left-hand side? Negative. Negative what? Nice job, Brody. Um, four. Negative four is one of the points, but because of the arrow, I didn't come negative infinity. So we would say the piece that was decreasing was from negative infinity. Sorry, that print so small. To a very big zero. I don't know how to do it from negative infinity so small. So if you look at this, we're coming from this direction, which is negative infinity. We're riding this graph, we stop, the wrong answers are negative five, we look up at the x-axis, and you would tell me the decreasing part is negative infinity to zero. You'll always, always, always use parentheses in this section. Increasing and decreasing never has a bracket, because when you get to the bottom, you're kind of waiting to go back up to the top. So when I'm right here, it's like the roller coaster, Woo, what happens? And you stop, and then you go back up the other side. So we're gonna go back up the other side of this graph, and now I'm right here, woo, and now I'm climbing, climbing, climbing. What would that be called? <laughs> it's increasing, good. So now I'm in the increasing part of the graph, and when I go ahead on the increasing part of the graph, where am I on the x-axis? Zero. Zero. And somebody else, I know Alex has totally got this, if I'm heading this way, what do, what do we call this way? Infinity, beautiful. What should go around my zero and my infinity? Parentheses. Always parentheses. Very, very good. So the piece that's increasing is going from zero to positive infinity. It's going to eventually open up over the whole x. And that's the hardest part of today's lesson. We'll do another one, okay? Yeah. 
Negative five. Good. Remy had a great question. Everybody, Remy's question is everybody's mistake on the next quiz, or, or the mistakes on the next quiz, not everybody's. She said, why aren't you saying negative five? The labeling is based off of the x-axis, not the y. So that's going to be a mistake. Kids are going to say negative infinity to negative five, but you've got to look at the x-axis, not the y. Thank you for pointing that out. The decreasing is the same. See how we're still looking at the x-axis? Isn't the point that it's not doing anything at zero? We label using the x values. Somebody in the math world wanted to label using the x values. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I gave you these great notes, to remind you to look at the x-axis. Because I know where the mistakes are. I've taught algebra for 19 years. This is my 19th year. I know where people make mistakes. They don't look in the right spot. Let's do another one, though, so we get it, okay? So now I'm jumping onto the um, roller coaster again. Make sure those phones are away. I'm going to start at the left. Here's Ms. Shackton, and she's going up, 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 and that is the what piece? Increasing piece. And a lot of people around me would think eight, but you've got to train yourself to look down at the x-axis. Who can tell me how this is increasing from where to where? Nice job, good, really nice. So negative infinity to negative two. Nice job, Christian and Alex, good, nice strong voices. So we have the coming from the negative side of the graph, I'm traveling up, 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 and then I look down, I say, where am I at? I'm at negative two. And then Troy, I'm gonna go on to this little piece. So I climb, 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 and here's the hands in the air, roller coaster part, woo! So that part is called what? Decreasing. And then can you help me with the decreasing part? If we look down again, where did it start the decreasing at? Negative two. And where did it stop decreasing at? Zero, good. And that's the decreasing part. And this is a really fun roller coaster because I went up, I went down, and what's happening again? I'm going back up again, really good. So Emily, now I'm on the increasing, so I'm gonna have another part of increasing. You can use the union sign if you want. And then let Emily get me, where am I starting to increase that? What X value, not Y? Put your eyes down for this little piece. Um, not quite one. I know it's getting a little messy in there. Yes, and here's a clue. It's going to pick up from the other point. Do you guys see that? So these numbers are shared on both of those. And now it's going over to the, I'm bad with my left and my right, my right. <laughs> So is it going positive infinity or negative infinity, or where the heck is this graph going? Positive infinity. And we do more of this. This is the first day we do increasing and decreasing. And that's the toughest part. I actually skipped the last pages of notes because the kids were getting the next page so well. So, so we did relative max, relative min, increasing, decreasing. I need a four, three, two, one. Four, you can explain this concept to next class, three, independent work, which would be your homework, just a little bit, two, fuzzy, one, you have no idea what I'm doing. Can I get, a, um, can I get one from you too, um, Logan? Good, yeah, good. And you can say like 3.2, because that's cute. Yeah, okay, we're a little fuzzy, okay. When we get to the homework, you guys that are fuzzy, I'll come over and get you. Okay, let's look at a word problem, because we all love word problems, right? Yeah, we all do. We're going to be talking about what's called the extremes of the graph. So without even starting, I can go ahead and see this is an extreme. That's a high. This one also looks pretty high. What about this one? This looks like it's a little low and a little low. So if I go around the graph, I can see those highs and lows of this graph before I've even read the word problem. We're going to read this word problem, and this is about social media. Use the table in the graph to estimate the extrema. The extrema is just the highs and the lows, the minimums and the maximums. Um, if you want a highlighter, they're up in the front. Um, of the number of posts being made, it made, so the number of uploads from social media. So people are posting on social media. When do you think is a time they're probably not posting on social media? When they're asleep, that's a good thing to think. What's Chuck? Chuck's not feeling well. So this is the hours since midnight. So after midnight, these are the hours past. So let's see. Can we find the maxima? This is the maximum. 
when I look down, how many hours have passed? 12. 12. So what time is it? It's 12. Yeah, so 12 hours have passed. So it's 12 hours after midnight. It's noon o'clock, yeah. And we see that um, 12 hours after midnight is greater than the number of posts made at any other time. And that would be when X is 12. So this kind of explains, Remy, why we're looking at the X axis, right? We want to see what's going on um, is at the high. So that's 12 hours past. So that would be about noon. And then it says that we have 100,000 posts. So at noon, let's look at our table. It's not 11.5 posts. There's not 11 and a half people posting. It's 11.5 million close, very good. So if you take 11.5 and you multiply by, it says 100,000. That would tell you it's 1.1, 1, uh, 1. I'm sorry, 1 comma 150000. 1,150,000. Oh, that's hard to say, Shackton. So I always go ahead and just multiply in the calculator and then put in my commas. Then I can read it like a grown-up or like a math teacher. So it would be 1,150,000 posts at noon. What happens at noon? You get a break from your job. Maybe you're checking your Facebook or Instagram, whatever you guys are on, Snapchat, and you're doing posting. You're at lunch or something like that. The minima is happening right here. That's the lowest part of the graph. How many hours after midnight is that happening? Four. So about four, yeah. Maybe you think it's a little bit over three. I don't debate those things. If you're somewhere close, it's fine. So in it is going to be what? Less than the number of posts made at any other time. So the low is at four. Well, what's four hours after midnight? Four. Four a.m., yeah. So at four a.m., most people are sleeping. Some people are posting still, though. So if we take four and we multiply by 100,000, we see there's 400,000 posts still at 4 a.m. Those people should go to bed. So, so about there, and we have a minimum. So we see a minimum and a maximum, but then we also have another relative maximum. There's also some really high posting at this time. Look on down, how many hours have passed, where we see that there's a lot of posting again. 16, good. So after 16 hours, we still see after midnight. Ooh, what time is 16 hours after midnight? 4 p.m. 4 p.m. So at about 4 p.m., we have a lot of posting again. Maybe people out of school, you know, most of us are out of school by 2.33, middle school, 4 o'clock. Um, so after midnight is um, greater than most of the posts surrounding the same times. But it's not the greatest number during the day. The graph has a relative peak at about 16 hours in. And then that's at 4 o'clock. And then about how many posts do we see? Look over at your, um, what is it? 10, so it'd be 10 times 100,000. So what's 10 times 100,000? 1 million, yeah. So about a million posts right around 4 o'clock. People are done with their day. They're not focusing on work anymore. And then we have another relative minimum, and this is kind of debatable. I mean, yes, this is a minimum, but it's still higher than most of the graph. But relative to the high points, we have a little bit of a low there. And how many hours in are we having a little bit of a low after we have that high? What hours is that? How many hours? 14 hours later. What time is 14 hours later? From midnight, 2 p.m., 2 p.m., everybody's back at work, lunch is over, we're not quite done with the day. How many posts are we having about then, though? We have it, you should have it in front of you, too. 900,000, yeah. So 900,000 posts, about 14 hours in, and that is less than the number of posts during the surrounding time, but it's still a lot of posting. That chunk of day from like noon to four, we're seeing a lot of people posting, whereas at four in the morning, we're not. And that kind of makes sense with, you know, um, you know, just like a lot of you were guessing there wouldn't be as much posting during uh, the middle of the night when we're sleeping. Unless you're a night owl. Anybody posting at 4 a.m.? I was up at like 1 a.m. because I had a kid that didn't feel good, but 
So that's the only reason I was up. Otherwise, I'm like, <laughs> huh? you went to bed at three. Oh, that's that's gonna catch up with you. Oh. Okay, the way the book does this is not very great. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this not so great way to do it. That's okay. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this expectations a little bit. That's why my key's not ready. So right now we're gonna cross out a couple things. Oops. I don't know the way I did this in the other class, and I think I gave the page to somebody. No, here it is. Nope. Oh. Okay. I bet just somebody walked off with my notes. That's okay. We've got it. We'll make a new one right now. Okay, highlight. We're going into end behavior. This is going to be really easy for you guys because you're a really smart group. The notation you see here is what they use in pre-calc. I talked to the pre-calc teacher. She said, don't make it that hard. When they get to pre-calc, I can teach them that. Some kids in the class will never choose to take pre-calc, so I torture you. So I agree. So we're not going to go ahead and do it this way. Pre-calc is required. No, Algebra uh, 2 is not even required. Yeah. You need four maths, and you're college-bound if you're in this class. So if you're thinking of trying to get into a good college, then this is where you need to be. So normally, Algebra 2 separates the college from the non-college kids, the career from the college. So, A lot of you might do dual enrollment next year and decide to write in our building, take college algebra. You could take a dual enrollment class. Some of you will take AP pre-calc, and some of you take probability statistics. The people that struggle will probably take the financial literature, which is that... Um, the business math, which all of them are great classes. Okay, I'm bad with my left and my right, so you're gonna see my hand go like this, and I'm gonna make this as easy as I can. We're looking at what's happening to the ends of the graph. So if I go to letter A right here, and I look on the left-hand side, what do you notice is happening on the left-hand side? It's continuing forever. In what direction is it going? And more general, it's going? It's just going up. It goes positive up. Good, Em, good. So everybody look, and let me go ahead. Connor, can I have you stop for a minute? Ready? So if we're looking over at the left, everybody would tell me that side of the graph is going up. We're going to use the word rises or falls. Which would you use for going up? Rise. Good. And then M was saying where it's rising to. Where is it rising to? Positive infinity. That's all we're going to do for this portion. So if we go to the right-hand side of the graph, what do we notice is happening on the right-hand side? It's falling or unrising. It's unleavened bread. <laughs> so it's going down. It's falling. So you would tell me it's going down. It falls. And where is it falling to? Nice job, you guys. Very smart group. Okay. And they always like to do this. They like to give you an exception like you see here. What happens to the left of this graph? It's, I would say it's neutral too. What happens to the right of this graph? Good. So if I was to trick you, and I won't, you would say it's not falling. So it's not falling, falling, and it's not rising. And you could tell me specifically that the Y stays at what number the whole time? What two, very good. So see how it's going right through the two? So this is just a horizontal graph where y equals two. It's called constant. So it's called a constant when there's no change to the graph. And when we get to section 15A, we'll be talking about constant graphs. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys try just a couple. Everybody try the left and right movement for this one. <laughs> Then we'll go ahead and do two more together, and we're going to stop here. There is a word problem, but I do not think you need me anymore at this point. I'm going to go ahead, and if you'd like to try these three on your own, go ahead. Talk to your neighbor. I hear a lot of chatter. I like that. Hey, neighbor. Don't you be my neighbor. Woo-woo. 
Okay, and then we changed and shortened the homework. So after this, get out page 29. It's 1 through 17. Page 29, 1 through 17. Does anybody already have this done? Yeah, we'll try a couple more together. And then like for if your guys can rip out page 29. And you can just do numbers 1 through 17 for our homework. I can show you exactly, okay? Okay, let's have it quiet just for one minute because i got a lot of questions and it might be your question. So Alex's question is, can I bring the notes for full credit? Can he bring it tomorrow? Yes. yes. Can he bring it on Wednesday? No. no. So I'm giving an extension only because some people didn't find it. I got three messages. We can't find it. So if you can't find it right now, you're going to be like Lillian up here. Or Lily, she's going to go ahead and pull open her on her phone, focus and pull up focus and I'm gonna walk her through it and I'll go table to table doing that. Okay, let's finish this up though. What happened on the left here? Um, how about Christian B? What happened on the left here, Christian? It's falling, good. So it's going down and what do we call falling? Beautiful, can everybody check their work? And then on the right here, um, go ahead uh, Logan C, what would we have for the uh, right here? Rises, good. Positive infinity and maybe a little up arrow. And that's all I'm going to make you do. It gets a little harder next year, but we should be good. And I'm going to go around the room and just get a couple more people. Um, how about Olivia? What's happening on the left, Olivia, of, of this graph right here? Rising. So it's going up. It's rising. And where is rising going to be? I love it. Good. And then Lily next to Olivia because I have a couple of Lilies this year. Um, what is it going to be for the right-hand side? It also goes up, good, which we call what? Rises, good, and then what, where is it going to? Beautiful, and I'll do the last one to save us a little time. This right here is falls, and it falls to negative infinity. Is everyone okay? Yeah. Do you think I can get fours and threes from everybody on this one? And for the right-hand side? It's going rises and it's going to positive infinity. A little bit easier than domain and range. Yeah. Can everybody give me their fingers? Uh, what are you right now? Four, three, two, one for this lesson. I'm four. Four. four right anybody here. a ten? Yeah, five off the charts. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I think you all do really, really well. Now I was gonna do this page of notes. We're just not gonna get to it. I feel like it's too repetitive and it's we're we're good. I'll fill it in online, so if you really want to see a word problem example, that will be online around 11 o'clock today. I'll fill that in before we get there. So we're going to do 1 through 17, and I have to look. Thank you. I don't remember which ones are which. So when you go on over, um, you're saying the behavior ones are 6 through 9. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And then the relatives max and minimum are called extrema, they're at the top. 
Okay? I'm going to get quizzes back. I'm going to also help kids find the notes if they haven't found them. I'm going to stop this video so we can have some conversations and uh, it can be a little more private and non-recorded. <laughs> and then I'll come around.